Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, Friday, November 16th, 2012. All right, so we left off with this article over here about Jordan, and uh, we'll continue here. And then, like I said, we'll take it home here with, uh, with some uh, local news. Kurdistan Alliance, we have the right to form a military force. So like I said, uh, Kurdistan oil uh, state is rising. And it says here that the region has the right to form a military force in the Kirkuk province because it is covered by Article 140 of the disputed areas. And just some uh, more news on Mali. Just uh, yesterday I reported on AFRICOM considering um, supporting this Mali invasion. Then you have the European Union group and EU group endorsing training mission for Mali. So training. The European mission to train Mali or Malian forces struggling against Islamist fighters. So there's also training going on in the United States and Iraq uh, by police for police officers. The Metro Police, this is Tennessee Police, I believe, provides training for Iraqi police officers. They were one of 24 American law enforcement agencies to provide leadership, tactical, and field training to Iraqi police officers. A brief back background on it, the program is supported by a grant from the Department of State, Bureau, and International Narcotics and Law Enforcement. It says the INL is administrating the transition of the education and training mission from the U.S. military to the State Department, which focuses on building and the rule of law. Right? Like Bush says, not the law of the jungle. Right, their law. It's two hundred million dollars wasted on Iraqi police training program from July thirtieth, twenty twelve. The auditors have concluded that more than two hundred million dollars was wasted on a program to train Iraqi police that Baghdad says and neither needed nor wanted. And the same things happen with China too. Uh, China studies U.S. to revamp police force. China is spending more than ever. Uh, before in an attempt to upgrade its domestic police force, but it may also be seeking to change its approach to law enforcement by looking to the United States for ideas, because we know uh, in America we have a lot of trust of our fraternal order of police. U.S. law enforcement officials and experts who have advised China's police force say Beijing is looking to update an antiquated, antiquated system plagued by outdated crime reporting methods. It says uh, it's more than just hiring somebody off the street and uh, putting a uniform on them. It's a costume. And uh, putting them th turning them loose in a neighborhood and saying, defend the party, right? Well, that's what they do in the U.S., right? Defend your pension. Defend your job. Write those tickets uh, on the 30th of the month. Defend the fraternal order. That's why most of them don't ever, uh, uh, are, they're never responsible for their actions. SWAT team fires semi-automatic weapons at unarmed teenage girl. Members of a SWAT team opened fire on an unarmed teenage girl this week when police officers outside of Washington, D.C. attempted to serve an early morning search warrant. Pre-dawn raid. Those are nice. 18-year-old is recovering from flesh wounds following Thursday morning's events in District Heights, Maryland. She was asleep in her bedroom at her house when the 15 FBI SWAT agents stormed the house with guns drawn, I'm shouting, nobody is armed, nobody has a gun. And then all of a sudden I heard, she's got a gun. And they just opened fire. Uh, Emery Huffley, Maisha's father, tells local news. So they said that she didn't have a gun. And the authorities allegedly saw something in their minds and had enough reason to unleash a barrage of bullets. Yeah, it's called uh, video games, and tele too much television and too much money thrown at them, and too much um, people telling them. You know, I was thinking about this recently, about wherever they go, the government's in it. It's always about police and fire. you got to have police to enforce the law, and you got to have fire. You know, it's just like, uh, and then we're supposed to, like, you know, suck their schlongs, basically. I don't know a better way to put it. And it's like, well, dude, it's not like we had a choice. We didn't, these guys aren't elected, and uh, we have to pay for them. So it's like there's no competition. Why isn't there competing fire fire departments? Why isn't there competing um, uh, police departments, you know, like private ones? Why aren't they accountable for their actions? Philly officer charged for punching woman. Jonathan Hosey accused of misdemeanor assault. So the Philadelphia police lieutenant who got fired for punching a woman at a festival was charged today with simple assault, a misdemeanor. So pretty interesting, huh? William says police were responding to a chaotic situation, but the use of force was unnecessary. So it's interesting, too, because you think of 9-11 responders, and it's just going back to that, what I was, the point I was trying to make with fire in that, 
firemen is like look what happened to those 9 11 responders they got cancer um, they were treated they were went through an fbi screening list for terrorists just so they can file for their compensation for going in there heroically and and doing all that stuff saving those people and putting their own lives at risk and they ended up getting shit on by their own government so see that's that's what it, that's why i'm talking about there's no responsibility for the government to take care of their people that actually go out there and do these things war in afghanistan this is the best example is the vets the troops right they don't you know they don't ask questions they follow orders that's what they're supposed to do you know and it's up to people in the united states to tell them you know basically you know this is wrong <laughs> war in afghanistan has failed and is not worth a life the life of one more soldier says this uh, patty ashdown it's now crystal clear that we have lost in afghanistan i'm not really sure if they lost like i said uh it's a, it's it's a beachhead right and um they got the resources there locked down the drug trade and all that it's a good location st strategically for defense against uh the east uh, mostly china and russia so they haven't exactly lost but the troops have and americans who believe that what they were doing there in the mission being moral uh, they lost as well most deaths are not by the enemy in the front of our troops but by the enemy among them yeah does uh what do they call them green on blue whatever send street thugs to fight wars so this is gonna be their answer uh it says here um a labor mp has blamed nastier violence on the streets on the fact that those who commit such crimes are not being called by being sent to foreign wars he says that the reason for all these people committing these violent crimes is not because of the media it's not because we live in a demonic uh totally engineered society that every day that passes uh is the, each little strand of fabric is being unwoven of our, you know, in our society by these engineers. Um, it's not, you know, it's not that. It's that these people aren't being sent off to fight these, uh, these uh, huge um, uh, wars to defend the empire and these petrodollars or whatever it is. I can't believe this. The reality is that we are not calling the young anymore. We are not sending them off to a foreign battlefield to kill other people anymore, and that is why they are on our streets. So, wow. How about good parents and good family uh, structure there, buddy? That's where it all starts. Australia's penal co but That's like I mentioned before. Uh, society as a whole reflects, is a reflection of the family, the individual family unit. And the government is what? Something that impacts society. So society is a reflection of the government. And society is a reflection of the family. And unfortunately, when the government is all up in your family's business and... Um, they're engine, you know, they're 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 basically telling you what to do, how to raise your children. Well, this is what you're gonna get when they're bypassing all of that. You get nothing but pro uh, programming and brainwashing coming mostly through entertainment, and uh, you know, no productivity. I mean, there's not much to look forward to as far as uh, as the recent future goes. I'm optimistic about the long term future, but in the in the short term, I'm pessimistic because it doesn't look too good if you have your eyes open. You know, as far as jobs and that go. So, you know, this guy's talking about uh, sending street thugs to fight wars. And this is from Australia. But it's interesting because, what, Australia is was originally, what, a penal colony. Yeah, it says here, New South Wales and Australia was founded by the British as a penal colony in 1788. And over the next 80 years, more than 160,000 convicts were transported to Australia from England, Ireland, Scotland, and uh, it also actually, United States, I didn't know this, but there was actually a lot of people that were indentured servants and, and prisoners. And a lot of people don't know that when they talk about the blacks from West Africa being shipped over. There's a lot of whites and Europeans that were slaves and prisoners. U.S. troops anger Okinawa legislators. The Japanese in Okinawa passed a resolution protesting alleged assaults by U.S. troops and calling for reduction of the number of servicemen and bases on the island. I don't know how much is going to happen. Um, because they're going to have a presence there. The U.S. has to have a presence in Japan uh, because the Japanese people, I, I think just deep down, they don't hate us. They just despise us being over there, uh, basically de dominating them, you know, because we won the war and stuff like that. And our cultures are just totally uh, um, dissimilar. They're unlike each other. So they can't wait for us to get out of there. But unfortunately, I think the Rothschilds have a big wedge in there in Japan. That's That's the weirdness about it. They're staunchly anti-West, and uh, yet the Rothschilds uh, have their, their tentacles sunk into Japan.
But I think the, the families and the mafias out in Japan have at least enough control to be able to maintain their culture, which is a threat, I think, to the West and them. United Airlines sued for leaving paralyzed Marine vet soaked in urine. Disabled uh, vet was pushed from his wheelchair and soaked in his own urine after U United Airlines employee refused to help the man to his seat on the plane. The retired Marine had filed a lawsuit. So, yeah, they just cared about rules and orders and barking orders on them planes, the stewardess. Army suicides for 2012 surpassed last year's numbers. Ten months into 2012, the number of suspected suicides by active duty soldiers has surpassed last year's total, even as the Pentagon struggles to stem the persistent problem. So, like I said before, right, it stems from society. What's the mission? Is it a moral mission, you know? Um, so they're looking to uh, nasal sprays to, you know, for depression. You're going to spray a little nasal spray in your nose, almost like an asthma, as a, a person with asthma does to curb depression. Also, they have suicide prevention, a really big program now. Like I said, what happened? Uh, one of the guys that was had no problems, an Army sergeant, um, basically killed himself. He was actually playing the role of a concerned friend after that, went into his truck and killed himself. So... Again, this is mind control. This is what they do. They unleash, they, they plant the seeds of programming, and then later, um, you know, it actually works. It works the opposite of what they say they're going to do. You know, that's why it's kind of part of that definition of mind control. Hey, at least that uh, 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 turd bag in, in Australia, the congressman, whatever, uh, maybe he'd be happy because this is, you know, this is part of the calling, right? But yeah, they'll, they'll make a big, uh, uh, a big political melee about how to help these troops when all they can do is just uh, look at what the hell they're doing, having them do, right? Because most of these politicians are cowards um, and stuff like that. They're not going to actually go and do anything themselves. Vets killed in train crash push wives to safety. Four servicemen were killed in a Texas accident. So it's uh, pretty crazy down in Texas. They were actually having um, like a veterans parade or something like that. And it goes on there and says they pushed their wives to safety while unable to escape themselves as the train bore down on a parade float at a crossing. It goes on and says six, uh, 16 other people were injured in the crash. One's in critical condition. The authorities say the crossing gate lights appeared to be working. It says the float was behind another truck at the crossing and couldn't move out of the way. So I've mentioned this before how I don't like trains. I I kind of despise them. I mean, I know they're good for transporting goods and all that around. That's great. But uh, they're so invasive, and they, they're just like everything else with all the complexes, whether it's health complex, the dairy complex, the beef complex, you know, the, it's, it's very dictatorial. It's, it's almost like it, it's basically a, an extension of the government itself. They just, you know, they just sit there. They take up your time. I've already gone through all this. You have to sit there and wait on them. And uh, they're making profits, and they're just making you sit there while you're coming back from work, going to work, trying, you're on your own time, you're off time, and they're consuming your time, which is the most invaluable source of life in life, right, is your time. And they sit there, and they just they detain you, basically. And you can't do anything about it. You don't get any compensation from them. And, of course, they can beep their horns. I think there's something very uh, satanic about those damn horns. They're so loud when they come through and they always come through in the middle of the night blaring their horns everybody knows that they're there you know whatever so if it's lights or something like that you know they don't need to be blaring their horns like that coming through disrupting the peace but they do this that's that's like the military with their bombs shaped like phalluses like george carlin was saying you know you know that's telling that's telling you and the whole town i'm coming through i got a big horn and a big train you better get out of my way or you're gonna get crushed and like the movie Into the Wild, you know, uh, they're fascists, man, big time, you know. Uh, oh boy, you know, it was just on there, homeless, trying to, you know, just not bothering anybody. It's an empty cart, and it's all about, a, you know, American spirit, right? And, uh, well, no, actually, he got drug off the train and got the shit beat out of him. So, now, I, I know that, you know, those homeless guys doing drugs and all that crazy stuff in their trains, and they don't want that and stuff like that for liability. But, um, you know, some of them just take it a little too far. So I'm going to leave it off here, and I'm going to return. We'll return with Ron Paul's message on secession. So I'll give my thoughts on that. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.